Peter. So can you test for glyphosate <coughs> levels in your soil? Absolutely, can absolutely, you? absolutely. You can test for glyphosate levels in your soil, in your urine, in your wife's breast milk, in everything. Cheese, Cheerios, Twinkies. This is when moms across America had the breast milk of women sampled for glyphosate content. And when they got the results back, you talk about some mad women. So what was the level? Do you still remember? Oh, oh I, I don't. I pulled this study a week ago because I'm doing it for the chickens. I, I'm putting all that together in, in the, the chicken information. I can't remember. I didn't write it down. I just read it, so I lost it, Ed. But the glyphosate level is way, way, way beyond what it should be in our systems. And, and so glyphosate now has been largely determined to be carcinogenic, okay, because it, it destroys the balance in our systems. Well, those people who have made glyphosate and use glyphosate, I mean, it unfortunately is a mainstay in agriculture. And, and it's worked very effectively, but what we have done is we have toxified our soils. Then we have toxified our food system because every disease that we have in the human population has been on a dramatic rise in a serious, in, in a serious way since we did genetically engineered crops that were sprayed directly with glyphosate. We used it as a burn down. We've been using glyphosate since the mid 70s, but it really escalated. Worldwide, right now we use three billion pounds of glyphosate a year. The U.S. uses 300 million pounds of glyphosate a year. And we, and we do this year after year after year after year. So you take, let's just take corn for half a, a, a minute. Glyphosate corns, GMO, we spray it once or twice with glyphosate. It's systemic, goes into the plant, goes into the grain, goes into the ethanol, goes into your gas. So when you start your car, you create exhaust, you now have airborne glyphosate. Where isn't it? Corn syrup. Soy. What's soy not in? 93, 95% of corn is GMO. That percent or higher of soybean is GMO. So where don't we have it? Canola, GMO. The vast majority of it. So you're either spraying it with, with glufosinate or glyphosate. And glufosinate is just a sister product to glyphosate. One was started by Monsanto, the other one was done by Bayer. But they're twin sisters of the same evil mother. So that's what we have out there. And so we have all of these genetically engineered products that, we, that go into our food chain and we just consume these. Well, this glyphosate now is in our systems. It's in our poultry systems. It's in our cattle systems. And so right now, they're, they're doing a direct cause and effect with glyphosate and Clostridium botulinum. And we're now seeing more and more infant deaths from chronic botulism poisoning because as the children are fed, the breast milk could be coming from the mothers. A lot of, of your uh, sudden infant death syndrome that they just said, gee, you know, we have a protein imbalance in the blood or whatever. A lot of it, most of it is misdiagnosed. The, the big part of it is coming from glyphosate stimulation of clostridium producing the botulinum toxin and it's killing the babies. That is a traceable event. Because when they take and they culture for that organism in these, in these children, these infants that are dying, this is the change. Well, I was at the <coughs> organic uh, ceremony you had in the Great Falls here, and they said glyphosate, the loaf of bread, you could find four, 400 uh, parts per million. In a, in a loaf of bread. That's how bad glyphosate is. 
Well, and see, this has become a practice, and this is how it happens. A lot of wheat farmers and barley farmers will use glyphosate as a desiccant. And when you apply, and, and to do this, you have to have a viable, you have to have a, a plant that's right there at the end drying down. And you do this so that it evens out the harvest. Okay? And it's very effective, but when you hit the plant in late reproduction stage with glyphosate, and they fly it on, and you only need an ounce or two per acre, but to finish off the plants and kill the field uniformly, because you don't want dry spots and green spots because it messes up your harvest. The problem is, is at that late application rate, the plant is pushing everything into the grain. So you have a hyper concentration of that glyphosate in that kernel. And where's that kernel going? Bread, poultry, hog, into human food, flour. It, it, it just disseminated. A few years ago, your beer brewers wouldn't take any barley out of certain states because the glyphosate in the barley killed the microbes in the brewing process and dang, there was no beer. That's scary. That's that, that, that was scary. <laughs> and we had Roundup ready canola. And we you do. Straight Roundup on that canola. Yeah. And, and, so, and so canola goes into the food chain. How many of you buy canola oil to cook with? Glyphosate in all of that. And so this glyphosate does a very fast job of altering any, every biology in every environment. Our, our guts our animals, our soils. And when we alter that biology, now we alter the nutrition, we alter the health. So pathogens, again, always produce toxins. Beneficials produce nutrition. I don't want to shift my population into all pathogens. This is how it damages us. So when we do things that alter our gut microflora, we are producing pathogens that then produce mycotoxins, neurotoxins, vomitoxins in us. Well, we're not designed to handle this kind of stuff. So your gut microflora is going to control 80% of your, 85% of your immune system. Does the same in the, in the, in the soil, same in our animals. And so, which guys are we encouraging? Well, this is the problem. Glyphosate is everywhere in our environment. Everywhere. It's in our water, it's in our air, it's in our soils, it's in our seeds. It, it's just prolific. So, what we have to do, and the defense that we have, is we can't keep putting in a toxin and, and just have it kill the good guys and push the bad guys. We have to reinforce the soil microorganisms with the good guys. We have to reinforce our gut microflora with the good guys. And this is the, this is the problem with agriculture. We are very good at killing things. We are not good at putting the good guys back. That's the balance that stops all of the toxin production and the bad guy overload. We have to put them back in. And then they can deal with the damage to the system. That's how we restore the systems.